Here come the six bombs on the wall. Can't believe Marshall allows that in this house. At six, fish at six. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. Happy Monday, but not for everybody. This is the fishbowl. That is the star. I got a top 10 for you tonight. Uh, if you will give me 23 minutes, I will give you the cowboy world. That's my promise to you. Money back guarantee. If at the end of this program, oh, by the way, thank you, Troy. If at the end of this program, you find this to be Exclusive, exclusive, in some cases, information presented in an entertaining manner. Would you please subscribe to what we do here? It's absolutely free. Your questions, your comments, and your criticisms are all welcome, of course, via the super chat provided us by the good people at YouTube. And our top 10 featuring Marquis Bell. And away we go. Item one, Dalton Schultz. Done dirty on a couple of ways, on a couple of levels. One, the best information that I have, and I'm prepared to be corrected. I don't think he ever got a recent three-year, $39 million offer. I was told he did not get that from the Cowboys. Maybe there's a semantic issue. Maybe there's dates I'm screwing up. Maybe I'm because I'm uh, going hard of hearing. Maybe I'm just wrong. Jordan Sanquist, first time that I got the notice for you going live. I don't know how that works. I'm uh, listen. I'm not here for my brains. I'm here for my looks and my singing voice. But I appreciate that you are indeed here. Um, many of you, maybe by the uh, by the time a couple hours rolls on, this is between 13 and 63,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation. I don't think that offer has been made recently. So in a way, he's kind of getting screwed double, Dalton Schultz. He goes to Houston. On a one year deal for up to $9 million. That comes from the agent. Uh, my friend Jordan Schultz, no relation, I think was the first guy to break that story. And you know what up to $9 million means, don't you? Wonk, wonk. <laughs> that means he's not going to probably make $9 million. Um, by the way, there are those who think, boy, Dalton Schultz, security blanket, he sure made Dak. And, uh, you know, I, you know what I think. Thousand links in the chain. But before you go betting on Dalton Schultz making his $9 million in incentives and accomplishments, yes, Curtis Berghoff, Berghoff, Dalton Schultz going to the Houston Texans, that's a beard scratcher. I don't even, I don't even know who his quarterback's going to be. Mosey understands who Jordan Schultz is. It's very insightful, Mosey. Tippity Troy Aikman cap to you. I don't even, who's the quarter? They don't even know who the quarterback's going to be yet. So I don't know what kind of numbers Dalton Schultz is going to put up. Maybe not good. Ken Bingo. I made it live and I just wanted to say, great job, Fish and Wild. Great week for the Cowboys. It was indeed. I wish my name was Ken Bingo. I wish my name was Fish Bingo. <sighs> Big Mac, we should have brought Dalton Schultz back and given him four year and 24 million. Dalton Schultz thought... He, he was going to go out and get a 11 million or more times multiple years payday. The market did not bear that, obviously. Um, I've made the argument not against Dalton Schultz. I'm not against Dalton Schultz. Lovely young man. To only 26, by the way. A lot of good football in front of him. That O.J. Howard for one third of the price could have come here last year and been a productive tight end in Dallas. By the way, OJ Howard uh, was in Houston last year and did some things. And now Dalton Schultz will go there. But here's where Dalton done dirty. 
double. Dalton's done double dirty. One, he didn't get his payday. Um, I don't know what the, uh, the final number is really going to be on what his guaranteed money is this year. Obviously, it's not $9 million. Randy Hankins, $2 pitch in. I live in Houston. This is player purgatory. <laughs> they, they are working to turn things around, though, Randy. I'm sure you agree. And if they, if they draft a franchise quarterback, listen, that was a good place to be when uh, Deshaun Watson was keeping his fingers to himself. And it can be again. Oh, just the one finger, probably. Dalton gets screwed by bad judgment, the agent, the system, whatever. But I think he's also getting double burned because of this report that keeps reverberating or regurgitating that he screwed himself out of, you know, $30 million. I, I don't think that's true. Hector, Uncle Fish Premium. Hey, how do I get to be Uncle Fish Premium? That's the circle and the star. Ask the fellas, including Jim Laws. They'll show you how. Jim Laws helps run this show. Tony Fisher might be hanging out somewhere tonight as well. Fish, do we draft a tight end or give Ferguson and Hendy a shot? The legend of Peyton Hendershot. Hendy a shot? I, I would not be in a mad scramble to draft a tight end at 26 even though the Cowboys are starting to telegraph that concept, um, all the all the mock draft guys who are either plugged in or the mock draft guys who read the mock draft guys who are plugged in, uh, many of them leaning towards tight end. You know me, Hector, BAA, <laughs> best available athlete, best player available. I don't care what, I virtually don't care what position he is, but you sit here on March... 20th, before you've even built your board, and you're saying, oh, we're going to take a tight end. That doesn't seem very smart to me. Therefore, I don't think Will McClay is doing that. More on Will McClay coming up later in the program. <laughs> Item two, Devin versus Dalvin. Look what's going on in the running back market where the Vikings might dump Dalvin Cook, and there's nothing wrong with him. His brother, of course, little brother, James Cook, plays for Buffalo already. There's Buzz in Buffalo, where they are also having their Ezekiel Elliott conversations. More on him in a moment as well. Devin Singletary leaves Buffalo. I Tell me I'm wrong. I know, I know we all love Tony Pollard. Devin Singletary is a Tony Pollard-esque kind of player right? He goes to Houston, joins Dalton Schultz. Good day for Texans, really. I mean, they had good, two good football players. Three, I think they might have just signed a starting center. His contract, Devin Singletary, running back, up to one year, up to $3.75 million. And you know what up to means. It means he's not going to get $3.7 million. So Tony Pollard is three times better than Devin Singletary? Big Z with a $2 pitch in. I'll take a shot of Henny in honor of Henderson. Deal. Paul Gale, pretty sure I'd go O-line at 26. Paul Gale is one of the smartest fish heads in all the land. But Paul, you are violating our agreement. You're not going O-line. You're going player, not position. Remember? Remember? Doug T, tight end is a smoke screen. If you got him. Billy Johnson, White Shoes, has been a member for 10 months in the Uncle Fish Premium Club. So who do we think it's going to be at tight end? I don't know. There's another guy named Dalton. But there really are like, like five real tight ends in this draft that people are going, oh, no, he's, he's, he's a really good pro. He's going to be a really good pro. That's another reason I wouldn't necessarily scramble for one at 26. Dave Williamson, welcome to the uh, Fish In level of the Uncle Fish Premium Club. Thank you for that. Um, you can get in, get on, be good, of course, via the brief fund. That's a super chat set up for us by YouTube. That helps finance the 75 member staffs, many travels. We have Grant Afseth tonight in Memphis with the Mavericks. We've got Marsha going to Phoenix with the Joneses. And I'm tagging along as well for the NFL owners meetings. Stink Floyd, there's too many dogs around here and too many cooks. There's too many cooks and not enough 
Until he cuts to the kitchen. Uh, there's also, uh, Marsha gets confused on this, the number of Cowboy players in recent years who uh, whose names have a hard letter in them and they're short. And Zach, Zeke, Dak, Dez, Tank. Every, <laughs> they're all run together. Doug, defensive tackle, offensive guard, running back, and quarterback, all much bigger needs than a tight end. Well, th this is the no-need show. Remember? This is the no-need show. SUNY says, I don't want Dalton Schultz. I don't want Andy Dalton. I want Roger Dalton. John Battaglia. Hey! Good evening, everyone. Would you please hit the like button? As a matter of fact, there's going to be, uh, really, there's probably going to be 20,000 people that watch this show. Let's say, uh, would 109 of you please hit the like button on the count of three, thus giving fish heads in Cowboy Nation the power over YouTube? Three, two, one. <laughs> Dustin, what will the Cowboys do with their first pick in the draft? If they're smart, and Will McClay is, they will be A, A. Joey Stewart, bring Zeke back. That's not emotion. He's better than Ronald Jones. Is he cheaper than Ronald Jones? James Macias, Jonathan Taylor's out there. He is? Oh, James, who's giving it? The, the Colts are giving away Jonathan Taylor for a million bucks? Item three, we did the uh, video this morning at about 9.30, the idea that Zeke is going to be humbled out there. This is not to say that Zeke needs to be humbled. It's not that. It's that Zeke is going to discover that um, maybe only if you're Saquon Barkley, and maybe not even if you're Saquon Barkley, do you get $10 million, let alone fifteen. That's what we're talking about, about the humble. Kenneth Easley with the $5 pension. The Eagles ran roughshod. It's time Dallas returns the favor and get competitive this offseason and make a run. Jerry legitimately acts like he's ready. There's a phrase that I've been using at CowboysSI.com. I'll use it here too. Also uh, at uh, Fish Sports on Twitter. There, there, is, there is a certain level of aggressiveness here in what they've done. Let's call it calculatingly aggressive. It's not quite wildcatting. We're not just, uh, you know, putting oil wells down anywhere that we find an open space. It's calculated. But there's there's aggressiveness to it. There's no question about that. Kenneth, I appreciate your pitch. And Dave, thank you for joining up. Uh, a good question about friend of the show, Isaac Alarcon. What's going on with him? That was kind of French. Sorry about that. I believe it was Todd Archer that said they're going to move him to defensive tackle. If you are familiar with the show, you you understand what's really going on with Big Isaac, friend of the show. Okay? And what's really going on is that he represents something. He's doing a terrific job going from zero to some level. But it ain't 60. Uh, Isaac is not a real NFL prospect at this time. He's been working his whole adult life now at being an offensive lineman, and now they're moving him to defensive line. I'm just saying. No offense. By the way, I, I no offense to anybody. No offense to anybody for anything that I've ever said. <laughs> Deal? Deal. <laughs> Item four. I spoke to our, our old friend K.J. Wright today, the uh, legendary Seattle Seahawk. What did you talk to him about, Fish? His best friend, Bobby Wags. You want to know what he said about Bobby Wags and the Seahawks versus the Cowboys? I beg you, in 23 minutes, go to CowboysSI.com and read all about it. Really insightful stuff. Um, X's and O's, but much, much more than that from our old friend K.J. Wright, um, who is really brings a lot of wisdom uh, to this and everything else that we've done together over the years. 
Bobby Wagner, why go to Seattle? Bobby Wagner, why go to Dallas? K.J. Wright tells us what he thinks he's thinking. And of course, he probably talks to Bobby Wagner 10 times a day, the same way I talk to you about 10 times a day. Item five. Patrick Jamison, do you think Dallas is done in free agency? Nope, I do not. Dan Snyder, they're trying to boot his ass. I put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Trying to get Dan Snyder out of here. It, it's not just the losing. That actually has nothing to do with it. Somebody's got to lose. I think there's probably other NFL owners that are glad that somebody around here is, loses all the time. That, the, the, that there's a franchise that's gone 50 years. 50 years without a long-term star quarterback. 50 years. No, it's the other stuff. Uh, it's the uh, it's the accusations that he s- steals money from the other owners. Um, it's the accusation that they they bring the cheerleaders up to the offices and tell them to take their shirts off. It's when you walk into the new stadium and it wobbles. That stuff. And who might just step into his place? Jeremy Bamlett. Jeremy Bramlett, member for 22 months in the exclusive, exclusive level of the Uncle Fish Premium Club. Uncle Fish, love this off season. Keep up the good work. You mean the Cowboys or me? Both? Thank you, Jeremy. The Josh Harris group that is trying to buy the Washington Commanders from Dan Snyder now includes, drumroll please, Magic Johnson uh, and everything that Magic touches in his post-playing career business-wise, turns to gold. Uh, a beloved figure, obviously, in so many ways. Uh, he he was with Josh Harris when they bid on the Broncos ownership. Uh, the Walmart family got that one instead. He's been involved, obviously, in Lakers leadership. He's involved in Dodgers ownership. And I'll just say this gently. If you want to, if, if you want to completely flip the script on what an organizational atmosphere and attitude is all about. Replace Dan Snyder with Magic Johnson and watch what happens to the fan base in Washington. And I know you're you're Dallas, so boo Washington, but you know, a healthy Washington franchise would actually be good for the NFL. You can still kick their ass twice a year, but the, the, have the franchise be healthy. That franchise isn't healthy. Um, we were making fun of Houston earlier. Houston was good a minute ago. And if not for the Deshaun Watson debacle, might have stayed good. Well, the Jack Easterby debacle too. But Washington's never good. And there's a singular reason why. And everybody knows it. Magic in for Snyder. (laughs) Item six, friend of the show, Des Bryant. Says, I got a fun prediction for you. I wouldn't be surprised if. OBJ and D Hop go to the same team. What? And that team, Des, is Patty Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs. What? There, there's no there's no financial reason you can't do it, as we've said here. You can do it. Um Juju moves out of the Chiefs and moves to the Patriots. Hardman probably moving away from the Chiefs. Uh, a lot of people think that he might end up back home with the Falcons. I haven't checked that. That might might have happened at 601. Yeah, Odell Beckham Jr., that that that's not the plan now, I'm told. That, that in Dallas. Um but that listen, you got to admit, you can you can be a non-OBJ fan. But Odell working with Mahomes can work and if Dez, now Dez might just be having fun here. He didn't exactly predict it. He said, I wouldn't be surprised if. But that would be a something. I don't. We did the depth chart uh, in the last 24 hours. You can go find it. You can find it at CowboysSI.com as well. Just Google that. CowboysSI.com depth chart. And as Chris G says, now we need a blank. Yes, the 
run stopper, the the defensive tackle. They've got a collection of guys that do some stuff, but they don't have the guy. John B says, Ashawn Robinson, that's who we wrote about this morning. That might be the guy. Michael Brush just went and read the Bobby Wagner story at CowboysSI.com. Good stuff, Fish. It, that's what we call exclusive exclusive. And by the way, exclusive exclusive first came up as kind of a joke. It was the invention is the invention of RJ Choppy, who still wonders why he did not get half the profits off the t-shirts. He's the first one that said it. And it, it became, it, it was a parody based on a truth. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. Now some people misunderstand it a little bit. It's still a parody. It's still a self-parody, but it's still a, still a truth. The interview with K.J. Wright about Bobby Wagner and the Cowboys, we got it. I don't know. What do you want me to do? Exclusive, exclusive. Want to get your Cowboy information from Frisco? Or do you want to get your Cowboy information from Bristol? By the way, yes, this shirt is in the Uncle Fish Premium Store. There's the QR code. Go check it out. It is a riot in there. I'm just saying, if you want to buy something there, good. If you just want to go in there and have a million laughs, go do that. Samuel D., how plausible is it to let Pollard go and go get Eckler for $7 million a year? The problem with the concept, and it's a great concept, because Eckler's better, is that his $6.5 million salary that he has in, with the Chargers is why he wants out of the Chargers. If they would just give him the money that he thinks he's due, he wouldn't want out. Therefore, somebody else taking him on is going to be in the same predicament. I don't, I don't know what number he wants. I'm sure if he looks across the landscape and goes, listen, I am Christian McCaffrey, and he makes 16. I am Saquon Barkley, and he just got tagged for 10. And I'm better than Tony Pollard, and he got tagged for 10. Roger S. Fish, how do we know that Pollard's ready for week one? Cowboys medical people say it is so. It's good enough for me. Uh, Texas boy, let Pollard go. You tripping. I don't know who you think's tripping. I'm the one that's saying $10 million for Tony Pollard is an overpay. Texas boy also saying, wait a minute. You just said the other thing. Texas boy, P-U, I smell a troll. Wonk. Wonk. Rico, Raccaroni. Hey! Rico Raccaroni. How is Eckler better than Pollard? Do you, Rico, do you not own a television set? I'm just having fun with you. You think whatever you want. <laughs> Item eight. Uh, big story out there. And we're going to work on this. Might work on this on uh, on our Longhorns SI page. Well, Bijan's good, but he's no Saquon. Yeah. Yeah, he actually is. That's actually exactly what he is. Minus the injuries. Bijan is Saquon. That's kind of the point. Horatio, Garza, D-Hop, any chance? Nah. Any running backs the Cowboys are looking at? Ronald Jones. And draftable guys like Bijan. Deke Applegate is the Uncle Fish premium subscriber with a great fake name or his real name. It is his real name. Deke Applegate. Fish, if I ever get a flat tire in DFW, I'm calling one of your four brothers. Thanks for watching the show this morning. I appreciate it. Roy Smith. Um, how about a two-headed tight end named Fergushot? We're pretty clever tonight, are we not? We're pretty, pretty clever. Kurt S., how about the running back from UCLA, the guy to draft, Zach? And here's the only reason I want to, want to draft him, so I can use my French accent. Zach, Sorbonne! I don't know if that's how he pronounces it, but that's how his ancestors, well, no, not exactly his ancestors. I take that back. That's how some people's ancestors pronounced it. Zao Chabonnet. Same thing uh, with Bijan. <laughs> All the running backs this year in the draft are French. <laughs> Item nine. 
And I said we'd do this in 27 minutes, and I think I'm going to be true to my word for maybe the first time ever. Chris Ojeda comes into the Uncle Fish Premium Club. How do you do that? How do you get the circle and the star? Ask Jim Laws. He'll tell you how. D.B. Cooper, how many bongs are in the office tonight? Six bongs on the wall. Smoke them if you got them. Chris Gons, I don't think Bijan's going to make it to us at 26. I don't either. Um, I've talked to two guy, two NFL team scouts, not Cowboys, about this. And one of them is he's a top five player. I know we devalue the running back, but he's one of the five best players in the draft. The other, I bounced that off the other one. He says top 10. Samuel, would it be criminal to pay Eckler $15 million a year? Smooth criminal if you're Eckler and you can get somebody to do that. That would be tripling his salary. Mosey, is it possible to get Zeke back? A Cowboys blogger says we can't get him back. I don't want to offend anybody. Everybody gets to have their fact-based opinion. But yeah, you can get, you can just get him back today if you want to. How much do you want to pay him? How much does he want? What role does he want? What role do you want to give him? It's it's not practical because if that was a good idea today on Monday, then they should have done it last Monday. And they talked about how to do it and couldn't come to an agreement. If Zeke sits on the shelf here for a while, or as I said this morning, you get to November and Zeke Elliott isn't on a football team in November and you've got a crisis in the running back room. So it's a never say never business. It is certainly not the plan of either party, but you absolutely could bring Ezekiel Elliott back. Dean Graham, what if the Eagles get Bijan? You got problems. Uh, they did sign Penny, who, who's a good player when he's healthy from Seattle. Never healthy. Big win, $5 pitching. I like the Ashawn Robinson to Dallas rumors. I don't, I, I don't know if I would characterize my conversation about the idea as a rumor. Uh, it's not even buzz. Uh, it's just an idea. Frank E., Zeke will retire as a Dallas Cowboy. That's almost automatic, that he'll come back and do the, the Emmett thing, the D. Ware thing. Yeah, no question about that. KR, are the Cowboys looking into bringing Hankins back? Yes. He's on that list of like, our run-stopping defensive tackle list. And um, Carlos Watkins is on it. I, I just want, I want to see if they can get better at it. Maybe not better. I mean, Hankins is good. Robinson is younger. Um, more, uh, more pedigree. And he's from Fort Worth. D.B. Cooper, Eagles take a cornerback at 10. Not if they're smart. If they're smart, they'll take the best available guy. B-A-A. -A. Uh, Zola, Zolo. The French helped America break the British during the revolution. It only makes sense. They'd help America's team break the no Super Bowl stick. Yeah, so you bring in a running back from France or thereabouts. Uh, Gibbs from Alabama, sad to say, Mr. F. Benavides, is not from France. Mwah, mwah. Item nine. Poor Zeke. They ran him into the ground. That's not what happened. Garrett ran him into the ground. That's not what happened. They just tried to win games. Um, th this little mini movement is clearly an, a, a Garrett, an opportunity to bash Jason Garrett. He ran him into the ground. He just ran him. He didn't run him into the ground. He ran him into the ground. Here's what's funny about the way we do it. And we all have this a little bit. So we say that Will McClay is kind of the de facto general manager. Then why don't we blame Will McClay for running Zeke into the ground? Some people think Jerry's calling all the shots. Then why don't we blame Jerry for running him in the ground? 
why do we blame whoever it is on the staff that we personally decide we don't like for everything that goes wrong? They did not run Ezekiel Elliott into the ground. They just ran him. And this last year, he got fewer snaps than the other guy. You can absolutely argue that they preserved him in 2022. And, oh, poor old Zeke. Boy, they ran him in the ground. They used him. Zoilo gets it. They used him the way they drafted him to be used and the way he wanted to be used. Could you imagine if you went to Ezekiel Elliott in his second year and go, I know that you're fully capable of winning a rushing title. In fact, I can look into a crystal ball and see that you're going to do it. We want to keep you fresh for 2027. We think you can play to 32. So we're going to cut your touches in half in 2017. So you can be fresh in 10 years. How, st how stupid is this? You, you, Eddie B, Fish, they tried to win, but they ran him into the ground. Will McClay is not the coach. I know, but I thought Will McClay runs everything. They ran Murray into the ground. Eddie B, they're just playing. They're just playing football. What did you want them to do? I'll tell you who's right. Uh, by the way, I appreciate your $20 pitch, and maybe I should uh, bow to your brilliance, but we're having a this barroom classroom, right? Rembids pitches in $2. Thank you. James Higginbotham was Zeke not a running back? Of course they ran him. So using this logic, they're running Zach Martin into the ground. Jesus, they never get the poor guy a break. He plays every snap. How dare they do that to Zach Martin? He's going to get tired. And he might get hurt someday. What are we going to do? Come on, Garrett. You ran his ass into the... It's football. Joey Stewart, it's not the same. It is the same. It's football. Eddie B, $5 pitching. Love the show. We can't agree to disagree. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the only thing I'm saying, the only thing that makes my opinion different than yours, or not different, but the only thing that makes my opinion different than yours in terms of its authority is I'm the one that gets to say fish out. Otherwise, you absolutely might be correctly right. I just strongly disagree that you're supposed to save guys for 2027. What would Zeke have said if Garrett said in his rookie year or his second year, I'm going to save you for later? And Zeke would say, man, coach, I don't know. It's third and goal from the one yard line. Uh, you, you, you sure you don't want, you sure you don't want me to be in there? No. No, I know, Coach, but, I mean, if we win this game, we're going to the playoffs. No, we're going to, no, we'll have somebody else do it. We need to save you. It's ridiculous. The players play. Sidney Jones with a $10 pitch in, and we are supposed to celebrate the very first Super Chat from Sidney Jones. Oh, God. Oh, let's do the Viking horn. Oh, Real great. I bet you love that. Thank, thank you, Sidney Jones. Thank you, Eddie B. I love you too. And thank you, Eddie B. I love you. 20. Dalton Kincaid is the uh, tight end that some people are talking about. Thank you for that. Uh, at 26. Oh, I, I feel so sorry for Zeke. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, thanks to his work ethic, his talent, his parents and his coaches who used him right became the highest paid running back in the history of the NFL. The last time I checked, thank you, Sean Deaver, for the $5 pitch in and the kitty cat bow. I believe Ezekiel Elliott has in his pocket. By the way, his house is right there. And it's a beaut. 
Ezekiel Elliott has so much money that if he really does move to Buffalo or the Bucks or the Chargers, he doesn't even need to sell his house. He can just let it sit there and come back and use it in the offseason. He made $70 million. Oh, the cow. How dare the Cowboys give him $70 million? Richard Schomburg, member for six months in the Uncle Fish Premium. That's too many carries, said no running back ever. <laughs> Stink Floyd, Fish, you told the story of Zeke. Bare chested, no shoes, only pajama bottoms, filling up his car at the gas station. He won't be doing that in Buffalo. No, he will not. He, he might win a Super Bowl if he ends up there. And I think all Cowboy fans will be rooting for him unless they play the Cowboys. Eddie B. Fish, you're saying there's a shot at Kincaid. Take it. Eddie B. Uh, big win, $5 pitching. Way too much fantasy football in the bar room tonight. I think so too. This was going to happen to the heavy lifting star running back. And had you told Ezekiel Elliott, we want you to lift less heavy so you can still be playing when you're 30, he would have said, are you out of your mind? He got $70 million. And I'll close with item 10. Because somebody's coming to the door. Ed's coming to the door, sugar. Hey, sugar. Son of a bee. Hold on a second. Hold on. Come on, uh, finish up the, uh, this award-winning program. Okay. I want you to think about this for item 10. If you said, if you, if we had Ezekiel Elliott sitting right here, Marcia, there's Ed. And you went through this with him and you said, what do you think about the seven seasons in Dallas, Zeke? What do you think about the carries and the touches and the catches and the touchdowns? What do you think about two NFL rushing titles? What do you think about, I think, two Pro Bowls? What do you think about the playoffs and the fame and the fortune and the fact that you're going to come back to Dallas after your career, and if you want to open up Ezekiel Elliott HVAC shop, you will become a multi-millionaire HVAC man. If you want to open up Ezekiel Elliott Ford, it will probably work. Ezekiel Elliott Barbecue, it will work. Ezekiel Elliott Real Estate, it'll work. Zeke, what do you think of all this? Because... I'm hearing a lot of Cowboy fans and a lot of Cowboy media people saying, boy, I sure feel sorry for Zeke. Ezekiel Elliott would be embarrassed for you if you told him that you feel sorry for him. Trust me. Fish, out. <laughs>